If you've ever practiced drawing your handgun, looking at yourself in the mirror, and while doing so, you blinded yourself with your weapon light, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and do all that good stuff. When it comes to the comment section, every time I read through it, the phrase, every day we stray further from God, pops into my head. But we're having a good time, so we're going to keep it going. Lots of questions rolling in, and a big percentage of those are asking me about low power variable optics and reflex sights with magnifiers behind them, and why I'd choose one or the other. That's a good question right there. So I've seen a lot of really stupid opinions on the internet about this type of stuff, typically from people who only have experience with one or another. And that doesn't make for a really good argument. You need to have experience with both. So with a low power variable optic, in this case, the Steiner 1x5 and also the Vortex and the EOTech Voodoo, I have about 8K rounds combined. And with a reflex sight, in this case an EOTech with a EOTech G33 magnifier behind it, I have about a total of about 10K rounds, about 3K of those on this particular build. So I have a little bit of experience um, shooting both of these uh, setups. Now, not as much as Lucas T-Rex arms, but he's a skinny thought, so gotcha. So let's quickly talk about this. Uh, Low-powered vari variable optics are little optics, and they have some good eye relief compared to normal scopes. They go anywhere from 1x magnification, which generally approximates what you'd see from a red dot all the way up to 6x. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds kind of. So you get that magnification and you can also get back and kind of get close to red dot. Now, the thing about it is that you're not really at a red dot type setup because it is a scope. So you do have scope shadow. So what scope shadow is, is when my eye isn't perfectly lined up on the optic, or if I'm getting too close or too far from it, um, I'm going to get that kind of black edge kind of bleeding over where the picture type picture gets too small or kind of blown out or <laughs> or it's uh, kind of shifting off to the side, so that way I can't really see um, what I'm shooting at. And with some optics, like the Steiner, it does have a, have a red dot on it. However, if I'm not centered directly on that optic, I can't see the red dot at all very well. Um, that's not true of all uh, you know, low-powered variables, but anyhow, the point being is that it doesn't quite have all the benefits that a reflex sight or a, or a red dot has. With a reflex sight or a red dot, you don't have any type of eye relief. Um, you have, you know, there's no eye relief. You're just looking through and that dot is projected to infinity onto your target. And that makes shooting from weird positions much easier. So the question is, is which one would I choose? And so let's talk about this. There, there's a lot of limitations to both depending on what you're trying to do. Because the reflex sight with the magnifier is a cool setup. But the thing about it is the magnifiers don't have the glass clarity or the field of view that a dedicated low power variable has. And typically with these magnifiers, you're not getting quite the amount of magnification that you can get from a low power variable. Um, Aimpoint does have a 6x magnifier out. However, I've never had time uh, to get hands on with it yet. Um, so mostly I've dealt with the 3x magnifiers. And so I'm not getting as much magnification as low power variable. So what it comes down to for me is going to be engagement distance and kind of what I'm planning on doing here. If I'm planning on working out of vehicles, uh, shooting around vehicles, lots of barricades, that type of thing. And if I'm gonna be shooting under 200 meters for the most part, oh. let's say urban type environment, I'm probably gonna go for a reflex sight and a magnifier because that down, down. plays to its strengths. The reflex sight is able to work very well when uh, shooting from odd angles and all that type of stuff and when engaging at really close distances. And should I need to take a longer shot, you know, at two, 300 meters, let's say, um, the magnifier will allow me to do that uh, somewhat easily. Now, if I'm in an environment where I'm, you know, for example, let's say the mountains of Afghanistan, where I have long viewing distances and I'm pretty much not gonna be engaging that close, then the low power variable would be a much better option because likely I'm not gonna be using that 1x near as much. I'm gonna be using that a higher magnification. And also I'm probably not gonna be firing so much from really odd angles like under cars and that type of thing. I'm probably gonna be you know, leaning against a rock, that type of thing, leaning, mounting against a tree. Um, of course there are those weird angles that you're gonna be shooting at when you're taking cover, but not so much um, with uh, as what you'd see from like an urban say environment. So the point is it's going to be environment and distance dependent. So if I'm doing 200 plus, go with that low power variable, 200 meters and in, 
definitely gonna go with that magnifier. So I hope that kind of helps you guys out a little bit. Um, one thing to note is that the weights, they're not that dissimilar. So the, the EOTech with the magnifier weighs 22.4 ounces. The low power variables with a mount, a good mount, not like a, a light mount, like a Geisley mount, they're weighing in at around 25 to 27 ounces. So not a whole lot of difference. Um, it really definitely just depends on what you need based on your mission set. So think about that type of stuff, figure out what's gonna work with you. And what's going to matter most guys is looking cool. And as we know, the EOTech with the magnifier looks really cool. So I made that choice for you. Now it's gonna be time for a montage. The montage.